Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the new lecture of this course, Fundamentals and Applications of Dielectric Ceramics. So, let us briefly recap what we did in the previous lecture. So, in the previous lecture, we talked about um, the microscopic details of treatment of uh, ionic and electronic polarizability. in which we saw that uh, you know the polarizability there is a when you when you estimate the polarizability and when you plot the dielectric constant the dielectric constant shows a sort of uh, resonance at a frequency omega uh, and this is the difference that you create so if this is one this would be epsilon or electronic and this would be omega o e for instance and at the same time you will have a peak in um, epsilon r double prime so, this is epsilon r double prime at the, so this is where your omega tau will be equal to 1. So, this is what we saw and we also started with a simple model for our uh, dipolar relaxation or dipolar polarizability where we said that we are going to treat, so for dipolar polarizability or polarization, we started with the bistable model. where we assume that you know you have a molecule let us say like this okay, and this molecule, uh, so it is connected in this fashion and this molecule transverses to another position which is like this let us say. So, this atom is basically moving to this position from position 1 to position 2. So, you might consider this as a rotation of let us say a molecule. So, this could be a different atom altogether. So, basically what is happening is that if you plot it plot the energy landscape, the molecule is shifting from one stable position to another stable position. So, this is position 1, this is position 2 and it has to overcome an energy barrier E A or Q A let us say. So, this is energy and this is let us say distance or position. So, it goes from one position to another position by and this happens by hopping. And when the dipolar relaxation happens, basically when you plot polarization as a function of time, the evolution of electronic plus ionic component is almost instantaneous because it happens at a frequency uh, which is uh, below 10 to the power 11 hertz. So, basically time scale is of the order of 10 to the minus 11 second and this happened extremely fast. So, your electronic and ionic polarization develops almost instantaneously and then dipolar polarization develops slowly until it saturates and reaches a polarization called as saturation polarization that is PS. And at any given point of time, this is represented by PDT, the time dependent dipolar polarization. And this is what is dependent upon a model that we will discuss. So, let us say, uh, we so we, we were talking about the probabilities of jump. So, when you have 0 electric field, then probability of jump from 1 to 2 will be equal to A exponential some let us say F naught, okay, F naught into exponential of minus Q A divided by K T. Okay. And this, this is basically energy barrier, it being an Arrhenius process and this is the thermal energy K B T. So, you might have similar frequency and so for 1 to 2 this is the frequency. Similarly, for 2 to 1 the jump probability will be F naught exponential of minus Q A by K T and these will be sort of equivalent at equilibrium. So, when there is no field then F 1 2 will be will be equal to F 2 1 right. So, there are equal energy barriers from both sides as a result. So, and when you apply a field a 
upon application of a field E, the potential energy of uh, two sides changes. So, this changes the and this is let us say delta Q amount. Okay. So, what will happen is that this energy barrier on one side will become smaller and another side will become larger. So, let us say this is 1, this is 2. So, on this side you will have reduction from Q A minus delta Q and from this side you will have increase from Q A minus plus delta Q okay. and this delta Q will basically correspond to basically mu E right and mu E is nothing but Q into D into cos theta. So, assuming that cos theta is equal to uh, they are collinear. So, we will basically uh, so mu d q d e into cos theta. So, essentially we will say that this energy is nothing but mu e for complete alignment. Okay. So, this is the change in the energy when that happens when you apply uh, the electric field. So, assuming that theta is equal to 0 degree. Okay. So, if this is the case let us let's, let's build upon further. So, assuming that we have so first assumption is that we have total number of bistable dipoles are equal to n per unit volume okay and as and n is a small number so that dipoles are non interacting okay so non interacting means there are no internal electric fields that set in and third is we assume that theta is equal to 0 degree so, when theta is equal to 0 degree then the extra Q that will be is equal to mu E okay, such that delta Q is mu E. So, when you apply a field then F 1 2 2 will be equal to F naught into exponential of minus of Q A minus mu E divided by you can write k b t okay. and similarly and, and if you just break it up this will become exponential of minus q a by k t into exponential of mu e by k b t this will become basically f. Okay. So, when, when we have no field then f was equal to f naught into exponential of minus q a by k t. So, this is f into exponential of mu e by k b t. So, basically it is saying that the site where the energy barrier has lowered the probability has increased by the amount exponential mu e by k t. So, in so the flow to one direction has increased, but flow to from other direction will correspondingly decrease. So, similarly when you talk of f 2 1 f 2 1 will be f f into exponential of minus of mu e by k t right. So, from one side there will be more dipoles moving to another side whereas, from another side there will be lesser number of dipoles moving to the first side because of change because of the increase in energy barrier. So, but however, we say that mu e by k t is sufficiently small and this is verifiable you can choose the values of mu, mu is nothing but q dot d. So, if you put in the some approximate magnitude of mu q and d and then the value of e then this is smaller than this turns out to be smaller than 1. So, for all practical purposes mu e by k t is smaller than 1. So, we can approximate exponential of so, if this is x then we can write exponential of x is equal to 1 plus x plus dot 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 and we can approximate it as 
1 plus x okay for bigger for smaller values so as a result we can write f 1 2 will be equal to f into 1 plus mu e by k b t and f 2 1 will be equal to f into 1 minus mu e divided by k b t ok. So, this is the approximation that we make. Now, under equilibrium let us say we have, we have equilibrium conditions that will mean that average population does not change with time right. average population at a given side will not change with time. What will it mean is that, so outflow from 1 that is n 1 into f 1 2, n 1 is the population at site 1 right, f 1 2 is the probability of jump from 1 to 2. So, this will be the number of dipoles or number of atoms or number of species leaving the site 1 this will be equal to n 2 f 2 1 and this will be population at site 2 whereas f 1 2 and f 2 1 will be the probabilities. So, we can say that this is equal to f into n 1 into 1 plus mu e by k t is equal to f into n 2 into 1 minus mu e by k t. So, if we now do the mathematics simple maths here so 1 min n 1 minus n 2 is equal to minus of n 1 plus n 2 into mu e by. So, I have written k t just replace this with k b t ok this is Boltzmann constant. So, this is first relation we get n 1 minus n 2 is equal to minus of n because n is equal to n 1 plus n 2 because number of dipoles are conserved. So, capital N into mu e by k b t ok. So, this is first thing that we get. Second thing the polarization can be written as polarization P s can be written as change in the number of jumps that is n 2 minus n 1 more have reached n 2 few have reached n 1 because of change in the energy barrier. So, total number which is shifted change in the dipole density multiplied by change in the number of dipoles per unit volume multiplied by the dipole moment right. So, this will be equal to uh, basically you can say. Um, ok let us let us take it at, uh, as this uh, right now ok. Now, let us see. Uh, so, this is the another relation that we have P s is equal to n 2 minus n 1 into mu. Now, let us work out what is the time dependence of of P d t. So, let us say the first we want to work out what is rate of change of dipoles let us say on site 1 this is equal to outflow from 1 minus inflow from 2 right. So, basically this is d n 1 divided by d t this is equal to minus of n 1 into f 1 2 right plus n 2 into right. So, this is the rate of change of dipoles on site 1. We also know that n 1 plus n 2 is equal to n which is constant. So, if I now differentiate so this is constant but n 1 and n 2 are changing right. So, d n 1 by d t is equal to minus of d n 2 by d t this is fine. 
So, as a result we can write d of n 1 minus n 2 divided by d t this will be equal to 2 of d n 1 by d t or it will be equal to 2 of minus of 2 d n 2 by d t right. So, now let us go back to our previous this thing we are saying that basically we are saying d n 1 by d 2 is equal to 1 over 2 d n minus n 1 minus n 2 divided by d t. So, essentially we are saying d n 1 by d t is equal to 1 over 2 d of n 1 minus n 2 divided by d t this was equal to minus of n 1 f 1 2 plus n 2 f 2 1 right. So, this is equal to minus of n 1 n 2 f n 2 uh, 1 plus mu e by k b t plus n 2 into f into 1 minus mu e by k b t ok. So, if you now do the just some substitutions here you will get minus of n 1 minus n 2 into f minus of n 1 plus n 2 ok into mu e by into f into mu e by k b t all right or you can write this as uh, or alternatively I can write this as half of d of n 2 minus n 1 divided by d t this is equal to minus of n 2 minus n 1 f plus n 1 plus n 2 divided by um, k b t into f mu e ok. I have just changed the minus sign just multiplied by a minus sign everywhere. Now, what is this? This is nothing but 1 over we said that p is equal to n 2 minus n 1 into mu. So, I replace this. So, this becomes 1 over 2 mu into d p over d t. What is this becomes? This becomes minus of p divided by mu into f plus this becomes n into f. So, n into uh, sorry uh, I have changed something here what is it yeah n into f into mu into e divided by k b t ok. So, is everything all right minus of n so, so yeah. So now we can do one more thing. We can bring this f here, dp by dt plus p. This will be equal to n into mu square e divided by kbt. All right. So we can and one over and f is the jump probability, which is in per second right frequency. So, this 1 over 2 f can be approximated now as so assume so this 1 over 2 f is equal to the relaxation time or time constant ok. okay. So, we can write this as uh, 1 over tau d p by d t plus p this is equal to basically we can say n into mu square e divided by k b t and if you recall mu square divided by k b t is nothing but dipolar polarizability right. So, now writing this in terms of polarization which is time dependent polarization. So, among the polarization components if you see the time dependent part is the dipolar part whereas the ionic and electronic parts are nearly time independent right. So, we can replace this p. So, since dipolar polarization is time dependent we can write this as 1 over tau to into d p d 
it is a complex quantity d p d divided by d t plus p d star is equal to n into alpha d into e star, where alpha d is nothing but dipolar polarizability that we derived earlier, right. So, here we say that at 0 frequency, so this is the expression that we get 1 over tau d p by d t plus p is equal to n alpha. So, what is this n alpha e? So, we can see that this is the dipolar polarization, this is time variation of dipolar polarization, which means this should be the net polarization or saturation polarization that we should obtain after sufficiently long times. So, here we define that let us say at 0 frequency, I achieve a polarization of P s, right, when the frequency is very small all the mechanisms are contributing, then what we get is let us say static polarization. Okay. That is the maximum I can obtain, right. And then that uh, then I also define and then di P d is nothing but dipolar polarization. So, if I simplify these uh, steps, so then so of course, to solve this you need to do some simplifications. So, let us say that for ionic and electronic your time scale is faster than this. So, basically time scales are uh, very fast. In fact, I can say time scales are smaller than this actually. Okay. So, they are very fast time scales, hence so for, for high frequencies I can write a component p infinity, this is equal to p i plus p electronic. Okay. Correspondingly, so, so for high frequency polarization is this and I define a dielectric constant as epsilon r infinity. So, corresponding dielectric constant will be epsilon r infinity will be equal to 1 plus p infinity star divided by epsilon naught e star. Okay. So, this is the high frequency part. So, this is this also star and at frequencies between 10 to power 2 to 10 to power 11 hertz which is now lower than this frequency because this frequency is bigger than 10 to power 11 hertz. So, lower than this frequency we have a another contribution which we call as static dielectric constant which is epsilon r s star. So, epsilon r s star can be written as 1 plus p s star plus p infinity star divided by epsilon naught e star. This is the saturation polarization that you are going to obtain after the dipolar polarization saturates and this is the contribution from higher frequency which is from ionic and electronic polarization. So, if you now replace the value of p, p infinity star here you will obtain. <coughs> so, replacing uh, this value here p infinity star. So, p infinity star will be epsilon r infinity minus 1 into epsilon naught e. Okay. So, if you replace p infinity star we will get epsilon r s star minus 1 will be equal to. Uh, so, if I just simplify it uh, you do not need to write complete form. So, you will obtain epsilon r s star minus epsilon r infinity star this will be equal to into epsilon naught e star this will be equal to p s star. So, basically the saturation polarization that you will obtain because of saturation or dipolar polarization is nothing but the difference between the high static dielectric constant and uh, uh, 
high frequency dielectric constant so basically delta epsilon multiplied by epsilon naught e this is what and this is expected right this is what is the regular contribution that you get so this is the saturation you get so you can uh, now modify the above expression as tau into sorry there is one mistake we have made that is this will be tau because 1 over f was equal to 1 over 2 f was equal to tau so this modification we have to sort of so this will be equal to tau this will be equal to tau my apology is for this correction so this is tau into d of pd star by dt plus pd star t this will be equal to epsilon rs star minus epsilon r infinity star into epsilon not e star right because this was equal to as i said was equal to ps star right so this is the term that we get for ps so assuming now we know that e star has a relation which is e not into exponential of i omega t so since field is varying sinusoidally it has a time dependence we might expect the solution of p is also time dependent right so we can write a solution so let's say we say that pd star can be written in the form epsilon not epsilon r star e star plus epsilon rs exponential of minus beta t it has some sort of form which is like this and we want to determine here what beta is okay so if beta is like this what we do is that first if we say that this is the solution we differentiate this dp d with respect to t and what we obtain is basically epsilon not epsilon r star and if you differentiate e you will get i omega into e star right minus of beta epsilon rs exponential of minus beta t so if you now substitute this in the above expression in the expression that is shown above so this is the first thing is tau into epsilon or not epsilon r star into i omega e star minus beta epsilon rs exponential of minus beta t then the expression for pd which is epsilon not epsilon r star into e star plus epsilon r exponential of minus beta t this is equal to um, epsilon rs minus epsilon r infinity epsilon not e star okay now what we get is we can separate the east the frequency dependent part and non frequency dependent part on two sides so this part will become minus tau beta epsilon rs plus epsilon rs into so this is exponential minus beta t term and the other terms can be replaced can be written as so this is slight rearrangement of the okay so both now since these two sides are equal to each other they must be equal to some constant and it turns out that constant is equal to 0 so basically we make first for the real part so real part minus tau beta epsilon rs plus epsilon rs into exponential of minus beta t this is equal to 0 so from this one can see that beta is equal to 1 over tau okay this is the first thing that we get and now we do the same thing for imaginary part so basically we have made them equal to 0 okay and imaginary part if we do the same thing then epsilon rs minus epsilon r infinity into epsilon not into e star minus of tau epsilon not epsilon r star i omega e star minus of epsilon not epsilon r star e star is equal to 
okay so so basically if you say that uh, if pd star is equal to epsilon not epsilon r star into e star then we can write so what it means is that pd star minus this is equal to 0 okay so if you do this substitution what we will get is tau into i omega into pd star plus pd star is equal to epsilon rs minus epsilon r infinity into epsilon r into e star okay so pd star becomes epsilon rs minus epsilon r infinity into epsilon naught into e star divided by 1 plus i omega tau. Now, if you recall polarization we had initially defined as d is equal to epsilon naught epsilon r into e right and uh, plus sorry epsilon naught e plus p and this was equal to epsilon naught epsilon r e minus epsilon naught e is equal to p. So, this was equal to epsilon naught epsilon r minus 1 into e which is p. If you look at this expression it is fairly similar essentially earlier we took dielectric constant dielectric displacement after inserting a dielectric minus the dielectric displacement without the dielectric that was equal to polarization induced polarization. Here also it is the same P d star is the static dielectric constant minus the high frequency dielectric constant multiplied by epsilon naught e which is this term ok. So, here we are taking macroscopic values maximum dielectric constant minus 1, 1 was when we did not have a dielectric epsilon r was the one when you had dielectric here we are comparing two relative values one is the high frequency contribution another is the low frequency or nearly zero frequency contribution difference between the two is the dipolar part. So, here we are we are now looking at that not looking at the total polarization we are only looking at the dipolar contribution. Additionally what we have in denominator is a term which is the frequency dependent term. So, if you make omega to be equal to 0 this becomes basically 1 alright. So, it becomes similar to what we have seen earlier. So, there is nothing too magical here it is just that now we have done frequency dependent analysis. Now, if we combine real and imaginary part. what we get is p d star to be equal to epsilon r infinity into exponential of minus t over tau ok plus epsilon r in s minus epsilon r infinity divided by 1 over i omega tau into ok this is what we get this is the the frequency independent term this is the dc term basically we can say time dependent dc term so time dependent d decay of let's say because it's exponential minus t over tau so how does the dc contribution decays as a function of time so time dependent decay of nearly dc term I mean you cannot say it is particularly dc because you have epsilon r infinity there is a frequency dependence there, but it is at very high frequencies for all practical purposes you can consider this to be uh, frequency independent. So, time dependent decay of the independent term and then we have this another term which is basically the ac behavior at low frequencies right. So, low frequency. So, this is basically the low frequency this is ultra high frequency which is nearly a constant term how it decays with the polarization. So, essentially this contribution is going to be extremely small uh, to di dipolar polarization and that is why most of the times we ignore that part. Now, considering the electronic and ionic polarizations to be frequency independent ok, uh, one can write. So, so we, have, we have gone little over 30 minutes, but let us finish this part today. So, assuming that ionic electronic contributions as as frequency independent right independent 
we can write this epsilon r star minus epsilon infinity to be equal to p d star divided by epsilon naught into e star right. So, what we have done is we have just taken the frequency independent of polarization. So, this becomes equal to essentially epsilon r star minus epsilon infinity this is equal to epsilon r s minus epsilon r infinity divided by 1 over i omega tau into epsilon naught e star and this at the bottom we will also have epsilon naught these will cancel each other what we will have is essentially epsilon r star will equal to epsilon infinity sorry this is epsilon r in r infinity plus epsilon r s minus epsilon r infinity divided by 1 plus i omega tau. And we know that epsilon r star can be written as epsilon r prime minus i epsilon r double prime. So, if you sub separate the real and imaginary part what we will get is epsilon r double prime will be equal to epsilon r s minus epsilon r infinity into omega tau divided by 1 plus omega square tau square and epsilon r prime will be equal to epsilon r infinity plus epsilon r s minus epsilon r infinity divided by 1 plus omega square tau square and tan delta will be equal to correspondingly epsilon r double prime divided by epsilon r prime this will be equal to epsilon r s minus epsilon r infinity divide into omega tau divided by epsilon r s plus epsilon r infinity into omega square tau square. So, this is what is the analysis that we have done and these equations are called as Debye equations. Okay. So, these are called as Debye equation and when you plot this dielectric constant as a function of frequency now. So, epsilon r prime let us say first. So, there is a frequency. So, let us say we plot log omega tau. So, at a value of omega tau equal to 1 you have a resonance that is occurring. So, this goes from epsilon r s prime to epsilon r infinity prime right and this is epsilon r double prime it undergoes a maximum. Okay. And uh, the tan delta maxima is uh, so this is for epsilon r uh, double prime. The tan delta maxima is shifted to slightly higher frequencies. So tan for tan delta, uh, you can plot the maxima like this, and this occurs at omega is equal to epsilon r s prime divided by epsilon r infinity prime to the power half divided by tau. So, you can find out that easily the maxima at which point. So, this is what dielectric relaxation is there is no resonance there is a gradual change in low frequency dielectric constant that is static dielectric constant to high frequency dielectric constant at a frequency which at which omega tau is equal to 1. So, this is also critical frequency. So, this is omega tau is equal to 1 at this point and at the same point we have a maxima in the dielectric imaginary dielectric constant correspondingly tan delta also shows a maxima at this frequency which is close to the peak of tan. So, this is what is the dielectric relaxation which is basically about slow change of dipolar polarization as a function of time. So, as a result we do not see a resonance we see a relaxation of dielectric constant to smaller values as a function of time. So, we will stop here we will discuss this further in the next class and I hope that this has given you sufficient insight into how dipolar polarization is estimated as, as a function of time. Thank you.